Welcome to Ask the Accountant, the podcast that is made for you. Weekly podcast live Mondays from 8.30 a.m., released on the podcast service of your choice on Wednesdays. Your main weekly hosts, Aaron Patrick and Johan Zari. Got something to ask? Submit your questions below or ask during the show. Podcast loading. We are currently getting everything set up behind the scenes. So sit back, relax, and we will be with you in a few seconds. Enjoy. Good morning and welcome to Ask the Accountant. Can I just say, Aaron, I love that tune. That, that intro, just that's it. That's my week started. Energetic. I'm bopping along. I'm quite happy. Anyway, <laughs> my name's Jeremy. We just need to make sure it says the right word, so because it gives live and <laughs> we won't even mention how it mentioned uh, it says your last name, so <laughs> we'll, we'll fix most, that one. Most day. people get it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, welcome to Ask the Accountant, the, your weekly show giving you insights into the accounting industry. My name's Jeremy Gorey, and I'm here with my co host, as always, Mr. Aaron Patrick. Aaron, how are you? How was your week? How was your weekend? Very good, thank you. Very good. Yeah, we had a, a nice little uh, chilled weekend because we had our Christmas do, um, but we won't talk about it too much. We've got a question about that later down in the uh, in the actual question bit. But yeah, we had our little Christmas. Well, I say do. I'm, you know, typical accountant. We uh, didn't do the old Christmassy. We did something different. So a bit of a tease for later in the uh, in the day. But yeah, it was a really good weekend, and uh, I, I do miss Formula One though. It is a you know what you kind of be a bit lost aren't we at times but it's fine it's fine we'll, we'll get on with it there's other stuff to do what about you Jan? Well, how was your weekend uh yeah very good thank you as you say missing a formula one already but uh the wife and i've got a plan a strategy nowadays so we've done it for the last couple of years where we use a uh, now tv um so we once the formula one stopped we scrapped the sports package and activate the movies package um not that we've sat and watched movies yet um we're currently working our way through The Good Doctor on now TV. Okay, okay. Uh, doctor that's got autism. It's been very good. We're, I think, I think we're on season halfway through season two now, if not season started for season three actually. Um, but yeah, it's been very good and something nice and easy to have on the background while you potter and do the housework as you do with all the adulting challenges that we face. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, days, very quiet days, weekend. Uh, busy week last week though. Just people off on holiday leaving me in and obviously I was away the week before so I actually had to do some work which was traumatic <laughs> not as much okay. traumatic as it will be for the staff team to go and tidy up after me but <laughs> <laughs> you'll get your own back this week though we'll talk about that won't we that's it yeah so uh yeah so what are we talking about today Aaron well today we're going to make our show our focus is on um accountancy web live make sure I get the name right for that one because we are both going to be there, and uh, one of us is working it as well, so another little tease on there. Mm -hmm. um, and also, we're going to uh, turn our attention to what kind of some of the major points is going to be within Accounting Web, which is going to be MTD as well, so we'll talk about that. Um, and then while we're talking about MTD, we've got some other updates as well. So, yeah, nice and uh, nice and uh, jam-packed episode as ever, so it should be, good. should be a good one. Completely, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's get the name of that show right. It's the Accounting Web Live Expo, um, which is, yeah, almost, <laughs> the 30th of November to the 1st of December in Coventry, of all places. Not my favourite place to visit, if I'm honest. Um, I'm not a big city fan. I prefer rural life, but he says living in Edinburgh, but I always think Edinburgh, York, um, very old school, very open green cities so i like those but coventry is a bit more modern and a bit more claustrophobic in my view but in um, fairness yeah. it's central though isn't it and it's oh, the yeah. only one that's central i would say i mean what else is there in the birmingham area or birmingham or midlands area there's not much is there so no no you're completely right coventry is a very central location it's it was quicker and easier for me to get to london from edinburgh than it is to get to coventry yeah but yeah. Um, yeah, it's central enough. It's easy enough to get to plenty of hotels and stuff, so you can't complain too much. Um, so, yeah, so Accounting Web Live Expo this week. What are the benefits, Aaron, of us going to these things? Why do you and I spend our time going to these things? Because there's a lot of 
firm owners and employees, I think for that matter, that they always look at these things and go, what's the point? What's the value? Is it worth me going? Probably not. And yet people like you and I sit here raving about these things, saying they're the highlights of the year um, and our social diaries orientate around them. So <laughs> what, why do you go? Yeah, I mean, I'll be completely honest. I was one of those who was like, why bother? Um, and, it, and it wasn't until um, just before COVID, that kind of year before COVID, that I got converted. And it is one of those things where you've just got to suck it and see it that first couple of times. Because the first ones I went to, I kind of was wandering around by myself sort of thing, not really knowing what to do or what to say, just looking at what things were going to happen during the day. Um, but it is about that networking. You know, once you start to have that first conversation with the first vendor and you'll start understanding, you know, what they're trying to do and everything else. And you start to understand the personalities behind those vendors. Um, and then you have the opportunity to see people around the floor that you go, oh, actually, I've seen you on LinkedIn or I've seen you on YouTube or I've seen you on Insta or whatever social platform you're using at the time. Um, and then you approach them and you're like, oh, I, you know, I really like your content sort of thing. And then you start getting to talk to them. And what they'll do is they'll tell you, oh, make sure you go to see so-and-so and so-and-so. So it's just about building that network. And it it seems like it seems obvious, doesn't it? Like you're in a room full of accountants, so you should really be talking to other accountants. But I think it almost you almost feel like pressured into not talking to them. Like, well, what 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 could you gain from talking to each other? But it becomes that whole essence of just even talking about the geekiest of things about what accounting software you use or what bookkeeping software you use or whatever it's going to be, just starting off with those sort of conversations and you start learning, actually, you know what? There's so much more I didn't know. You know, I've been doing it this way my whole time for a practice. So you know, maybe you've been doing your ID checks by sending them to the post office f forever. But then you realize actually there's better ways out there and there's people who are doing it much, much more efficiently. Um, and then you talk to the accountants who are doing it. And not only do you get that opportunity to go, oh, actually, yeah, there's quicker and easier ways, but actually I can charge my clients for it or I could build it into this price point. And the vendors can tell you one thing, the accountants can tell you another, and you can make an informed decision. Um, and I feel that, for me, has been where the benefit is. And you know, obviously, it sounds cringy, but the whole um, after-party scene as well is really, really beneficial. Like I've learned more out of those after-parties and asked the accountant is here because of an after-party QuickBooks Labs is still going because of an after party. Like it, again, we build those relationships, those networks that help us through our day to day work, and I think that becomes really important. Definitely, yeah. It's um, there's so many aspects and angles to it, isn't there? It's like absolutely tons. So, and what, yeah. what about you? What's your favourite bits about it? What What do you find? All of the above. I absolutely. Yeah, I love it all. I think the after parties are such a good time to network, not just with accountants, but with the software providers. Like a lot of my opportunities to beta test softwares have come off the back of a pint at an after party. Yeah. Um, and a lot we've got very strong, you know, people always ask me, how do you create such strong working relationships with your software providers? And it normally is because I've spent time in a non formal position as it were where i'm not stood at a stand or anything where it is a bit more okay the sales pitch is gone let's let's talk properly and directly over a pint what's and all as well at that point isn't it? exactly you know and um yeah that's where a lot of our software relationships have come from so they really i know a lot of people go to these events and then disappear thinking that oh, it's just a party but actually that's where a lot of the value is um accounting web live expo there's a lot of software providers on there that i've not met before and i'm looking forward to going and seeing those whereas you go to some of these conferences and it's all a bit they're back again and that's great and you can continue building your relationship there but seeing new people there is always fantastic um and yeah you just don't know what you're going to walk away with other than a bag full of swag which is obviously a huge benefit. You know, you don't get a wonderful shelving unit like this full of swag without going to these conferences. Um, so I normally pack very light, even though I've got a big suitcase and plenty of space for my swag from day one and two. Um, and review what I've got on day one, work out what I've missed out on and go and try and pick it up on day two. 
Um, but yeah, it's it's a great event for networking, developing your business, growing forwards, new ideas. Um, yeah, I absolutely love these things. And as you say, I, I'm I'm working at this one. Um, the QuickBooks team, having had me at the small business event a couple of weeks ago, uh, the next day after the event there finished, invited me to come and stand on the stand for two days at Accounting Web Live and basically talk to partners and talk to accountants and bookkeepers about how I use their software in-house and how we implement it on a day-to-day basis. They've realized that actually, yeah, your sales team and your tech team, they can talk to you until they're blue in the face about all these features, but actually implementing it and how do you actually use this or I've got this problem, how do I fix it? Um, And that's been, they found that really valuable. I absolutely love doing it. Um, So yeah, so I will be stood on the QuickBooks stand as the Ask the Expert type role uh, for two days. So if anyone wants to come along and see me, that'd be great. Uh, It was an absolute pleasure at the Great Business Show to have people come up and, oh, you're Johan, I've you know, I listen to your podcasts or I follow you on LinkedIn, really like your posts. Like, that's quite a bit of a a buzz, shall we say? Uh, minor celebrity. You know, we're all a celebrity, even if it's only to two or three people, that'll do me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's normally a really good two days with lots and lots of benefits, not just being sold to, but actually networking with accountants and software providers and walking away with ideas of how to implement them onto your firm. So, yeah. So what, what, I, what I've learned from there is this year, you're going to need people to be out on the show floor getting you the swag. So if anyone out there is listening and they <laughs> they could pick up two of each swag, that'd be great. And that'd then be just brilliant. the QuickBooks uh, stand late, later in the day. Um, yeah. before, before going forward, we should really um, and, and talk about the fact we've got some people talking in we've the chat. We've got comments. We have. Ashley, not, oh, great to see you, Ashley. And we are loving your live show each and every Thursday. No, Wednesday, isn't it? It's Wednesday. You'll have to tell us in the thing. It's, yeah. But it does a live show at 12 o'clock. Um, the 15 so minute guy. Yes, absolutely love that. Uh, Paul's with us again. Hello, Paul. How's it going? And we've got some questions and comments as well so actually mentions the fact that commentary makes perfect sense to get everyone there nice it's not london centric and i guess the hotels will be cheaper well they're definitely cheaper but they're um i don't know if i'm completely missing out here but i couldn't find any hotels around the actual area that was available so i left it too late um so mine's a little bit out of the way but you're right it's definitely cheaper a lot lot cheaper um and also we get a uh, free breakfast as well which you don't get through the uh for the uh, london centric ones um sarah good morning from midlands commentary great location for me excited to go with my first accounting web expo thingy well Sarah, you're going to be having a great time there if you do see us make sure you say hello don't be shy um the best thing to do there is just find someone to to wander around with and um talk to the vendors with and everything else i promise you you'll get the most out of it um having worked for software vendors i love the after show parties because it's a great chance for us to really understand what accountants and bookkeepers want from a software relationship that's what ashley says and he's absolutely right how many times have we um, mentioned something during one of those after shows and you know a couple of months later that feature's actually arrived yeah. within the uh, software it is it is it is the right time to do it because it is that opportunity for us to to talk about it like like i said warts and all like you know the software development teams are doing it in a bubble majority of the time. And it, they rely on people like ourselves and the rest of the community to give that feedback, to go, you know what, we love what you're doing here and we, you know, we support what you're doing, but this isn't what quite working for me or this makes it my life more difficult or have you considered doing this because we've seen someone else doing it and they're doing it really well. Um, and it just builds it. And, and we're in a privileged position in the accounting industry where all of these different software providers are are fighting against one another to, you know, improve and everything else. And it's just pushing the whole industry forward. You know, imagine what QuickBooks or Xero would have been without QuickBooks or Xero. You know, they would have just sat there and stagnated. They need those those opportunities to push. So uh, Paul also mentions the fact that it was, many of them are free to attend as well, which is exactly right. There's only a very few now where we've got to actually pay for, isn't it? I think it's literally the um, QuickBooks uh connect and xericon that are the paid for ones that i i can think of um yeah but they don't have 
the vast array of exhibitors that these free events do. So, yeah, they charge for a more niched market, niched experience, I suppose. So, yeah, yeah, it, it, and that's you can kind of understand why. But yeah, the, these ones are completely free. So, make sure you attend, and the after parties always attend. One of the things, just to bear in mind, I don't think it's for this one, but just keep an eye on vendors for after parties because most of the time they're kind of connected to a a wristband or a, a sign up or something but yeah keep your ear to the ground and you'll always find they want your email there. address <laughs> they do they do yeah iris have been emailing me a lot since the last time we went there but <laughs> oh speaking of which hi bev how's it going oh she's getting fomo for the event she won't be there this week um and then just quickly ashley says that um yes every 15 minutes for accountants and bookkeepers and it's on a wednesday unfortunately he's going to be missing the accounting web event so that's a shame actually we'd have loved to have seen you there so yeah it looks like it's going to be quite a jam-packed one like you said this, this time there were some vendors there that um that you're kind of looking forward to do you want to kind of peek behind the curtains or any kind of ones you want to have a shout out that you want to talk about or, or or find out what they're doing yeah i mean it's always good to see the usual suspects there and see what they're doing yeah. um but there's a lot of names on there that I've never heard of before. I've not seen before. So I've heard rumors of, so, um, FYI docs, I've been hearing mumblings about them recently. So it'd be great to be able to try and get away and go and see them and see what they're all about. Um, you know, hammock are there. Hammock are always a great team to go and visit. Um, I recommend. definitely worth a chat with them. Um, I'm hearing lots and lots of positive stuff about Libio, um, so I might go and see them. But yeah, there's there's always lots of things there that make you think, mm, could be worth a going to visit. Um, so yeah, exciting list. Um, if you've not seen it and you're going, then check out the Exhibitors tab on the Accounting Web Live Expo page. Um, they're all there, and it, can, it just helps you to plan your day a bit. Now... I've given up planning my day at these things because, <laughs> I mean, this time, obviously, I'm, I'm stood on a stand-up for two days. But I used to go for all the exhibitors, highlight the ones I want to see, work out when they're speaking and who I need to go see first. Then I'd go and highlight all the softwares I wanted to go and see, and it just never worked out. Um, I can't remember the last show where I went and sat. and Oh, no, I do remember. So the last time I went and actually sat and watched a speaker at one of these shows was at Accountex. I went to watch Nick Williams's uh, session for QuickBooks um, about MTD and the modern firm. Yeah. But before that, I cannot remember the last time I sat and what was, you know, went and watched these exhibit uh, these sessions, speaking sessions. However, at Accountex North, I took one of my colleagues who sat at half a dozen different sessions and said, came away thinking they're all fantastic and lots of ideas and inspiration so just because it's not for me and i've probably heard it a million times over doesn't mean that they're not good sessions it's just finding what's right for each individual um so yeah definitely go in have a look at the program have a look at the exhibitors work out who you want to speak to otherwise you will just speak to loads of people and get nowhere so go with a focus what yeah. do i want to improve you could turn around and say well actually i want to improve my document capturing software process so go and talk to Dex, go and talk to auto entry, make sure they're your key focus. You know, I want to decide what software I'm going to use for landlords MTD. Go talk to QuickBooks, go talk to Free Agent, go talk to Sage and Zero and Hammock and work out what solution is going to work for your clients best. And just have that core focus, I think, is always a really important thing to do. Um, yeah. And then anything on top of that is just a bonus, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think that's the thing, isn't it? Like, they are overwhelming. Like the, the first account X I have went to, like the building is so big. There's so much going on. There's so many people walking around. You're right. You get completely lost. Um, but I think this this show, not so so much. I think this show is very much a, a more focused show, which is good. Um, and maybe won't have quite the footfall that places like account X will have, which again is going to be a good thing. Um, because then that gives you the opportunity to really go to the the, the, the leaders of the industry and talk to them and have a have a proper chat. I mean, we've not mentioned yet Cresco. Like we, we're huge fans of Cresco, yep. and, and that they are definitely a stand to go and have a look at and talk to because you'll be surprised at how that can help. And their whole 
premise and the whole benefit is about helping you help your clients. Um, yeah, you might be able to get some benefit for you in your practice in terms of how you receive payments going forward, but it also gives you that conversation about how you can help your clients and gives you those extra tools to help maybe win a new client or at least improve a relationship with them. So that's where we find those major benefits. And I hadn't heard of Cresco before I went to one of these events. And then suddenly, you know, they become a, a you know an important part of my arsenal in terms of talking to clients and bringing that conversation in. I'm um, fairly sure that was a uh, after party introduction, wasn't it? It certainly was. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 So, and without that, I'd just still be saying, oh, you've got this thing called PayPal and this thing called Stripe and, you know, clients would be not seeing the benefit of what else is out there. And I think that's that's where it becomes really important. You know, I'm, I'm, it's upsetting that, you know, people like accountancy, accountancy managers not there, but, you know, that's up to them, isn't it? You know, they're, they're not going to be there. But, you know, normally those are the sort of people I would push people towards as well. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, there'll be other other vendors out there and, and we'll see that. And maybe one day we might even have a client engage here possibly on there maybe i it, it is there's a lot of money to go to these events um so you need to be confident you've got the product where it needs to be to go and i have seen people go to these events too early and stumble um so yeah it's it's a it's an expensive way to test your audience and your features and stuff yeah. um but yeah it it's a fantastic event um it's also a really good reminder when you go through the exhibitors list of who owns what now. So like you've got Fathom, an access company. You've got Futurely by Sage. You've got Auto Entry by Sage. You know, everyone's starting to tag their list, who owns them onto their logos now, which is always very interesting to remind you as who's brought who recently. Um, so yeah, brilliant. Okay. So Accounting Web Live, definitely the place to be this week. Aaron and I will be there. Aaron's wandering. I will be on the QuickBooks stand answering all manner of questions. Um, and, yeah, just plan your day ahead. Come and see us if you want to come and see us. It would be great to see people and have a chat. Um, and just stay hydrated while you're there. Like, you will not believe how quickly you run out of hydration in these things. And you, So... The QuickBooks team were a bit baffled by the fact that I didn't go for lunch. I'm normally a two-meal person, so I normally have lunch and dinner. But for these conferences, I have a huge breakfast at the hotel. Then that's me good until dinner time because um, that's an efficient way to use your time in my mind. Um, but, yeah, you're going to be talking to a lot of people. You're going to be stood around and walking a lot. Even if your stepometer doesn't quite clock all those steps, you're going to be on your feet all day. Um, so even if you don't drink, there's the uh, conference hangover, which is just sore legs and a sore throat because you've been talking so much and stood around so much. Um, so that is a silver lining of going to the sessions is normally you can sit down, although there's quite a lot of sessions yeah. that I've seen are standing room only normally at the, by the time the session starts. So getting in early is always a bonus if you want a seat for 15, 20 minutes so you can actually rest your legs. Um, but yeah. So, what else have we got to talk about, Aaron? Well, one of the main focuses on Counting Web and something that I would definitely think is going to be um, relevant for us accountants and, and for clients as well, because I think, you know, clients need to have that, that reassurance that accountants are going to know what they're talking about, and it's all going to be down to MTD. So, what I do like about this one is they're saying that this is a conference by accountants for accountants, and that's the kind of... The, the tagline that they're pushing for. And I think that's definitely yep. a good thing. And what I'm hoping, and and I know that, you know, some vendors are definitely going to be there and I can't say which NDAs and everything else, but I know that there are going to be a bigger focus this time around and hopefully to see for more is the fact that MTD for accountants and what, what can the vendors do to help us actually help it. And, I, and I, it, it's, it's a good, good time to do it, I think, because I know we had our little rant way back when in one of the first episodes we did about how you know the software vendors aren't helping us enough as accountants and then suddenly <laughs> some changes are happening which is good to see um and then it's uh but but we need we need that reassurance so i think during the event one of the things i'd highly recommend people to keep an eye out and look at especially when it comes to the talking opportunities and having those time to sit down and have those um 
either with the vendors themselves or during some of the talks the vendors will be having is let's let's make sure that people are being heard about the fact that us accountants we need to be helped with the mtd side of things and, and i think the industry is listening i can definitely see some vendors doing that and i think yep. as what we need to do then is to listen to them when they and the more people are listening and give the feedback and everything else that it's going to be so now i'm really really looking forward to that you know th there's going to be the vendors themselves so you've got your bookkeeping solutions are going to provide solutions to help us you've got your accounting practice management solutions that can help us um and then you know your, your accounts production software and everything else can can have some solutions as well so it's going to be important we've not got long until mtd is fully live and, and ready to go so i think that's definitely going to be something to look forward to um i finally got my um my approval come through to actually become an mtd submitter so i'm looking forward to uh, documenting that as much as i'm allowed to so do keep an eye out on socials and stuff because i think the more we see the process, the more we see the the you know what's and all again using that same phrase third time third time's charm, but the more we see those sort of process, I think the better we're going to be on it. So, yeah, MTD is going to be a big focus. And you know, I I was critical of some of the other um, webinar uh, of some of the other um, uh, expos being all MTD focused, and that's all they talk about. But I'm happy now that there's a bit of a shift, or at least there seems to be a shift on. Okay. MTD is going to be MTD. It's going to all the software is going to submit it one way or another. But then, what can the they do to help us actually deliver that service for clients? And I think that's going to be something important to to keep an eye on. Definitely, definitely. Um, right. So we've just got Sarah saying she's booked into so many sessions already. So that is a benefit of Accounting Web Live is you can book into your sessions early uh, before arriving, which is great. So she's going to be an orange blur running around. Um, so if anyone sees an orange blur, that's Sarah. And Mark says, it's been a great listen. Unfortunately, I've got a meeting to dash to at 9am, uh, the Monday 9am meeting. Never a fun one. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you, Mark, for listening for the first half hour. Um, yeah, the, looking at the programme, it's quite a well-balanced one. There's quite a lot of different areas of expertise. There is some focus um, in the form of MTD, yes. But actually, I think we've now got, it's less hypothetical now. All the big players have got their solutions kind of being shown in videos and stuff. And I think they're showing the simplicity that is going to come with it. Now we need to work out how we're going to implement it in practice and what our processes are going to be. So, yeah, it, I would imagine this time next year it will be lots of accountants saying, well, this is how we're dealing with it in the firm, which would be good. Yeah. Um, I, I can't remember what time they're doing it, but I know there was a, um, uh, in fact, I found it here, a supply, supplier theatre one at 1045. You've got Sages, Chris Downing and Samantha Mitchum as well doing a whole session on how to plan for it now. So yeah. that is definitely one I earmarked from day one, I thought would be definitely useful. Um, especially when you think that Sage are going to be one of those good examples of they've got a whole ecosystem there and then. So even if you're not using Sage itself, at least have a look at what the ecosystem can do to help you. You know, the proposal, the um, what software to use, you know, what practice management solution to use, that sort of thing. And that, that what that should do is if you, if you listen to those guys and listen to what they've got there, that should give you some insights that even if you're not using Sage itself, then you should be able to find an equivalent of whatever solution you're using. So, you know, let let the people like that just kind of give you some guidance of how they're going to be doing it. And I know Samantha herself, I know she's really hot on processes and getting things all automated. So she's going to be the right person to, to listen to. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people will turn their nose up at something like that because it's Sage or it's QuickBooks or it's Zero person. But actually, if you go in and you listen to what they're doing and you just replace those key words of, you know, she might be using accountancy manager. Well, let's replace that with client engager or another practice management solution out there. She might be using Sage. Well, let's replace that with QuickBooks, Zero, Numisma, KPM, whatever tool you're using. Take those learnings and processes that they're doing and see if you can supplement your tools in for their tools and maintain the same processes. So... Yeah, it's definitely worthwhile going to these things, even though they are sponsored and they will be plugging their own softwares, and that's fine. But when you scrape off the software badge, 
the information they're giving you is still really, really important. Um, yeah. So go in open-minded. Because it's the pain points, isn't it? And that's what we're we're trying to figure out. And I think one of the things that I learned, again, about why I, why I rave about these so much, about these sort of events and, and make sure people go to them is, you know, it can be quite a lonely world, especially being a practice manager and, and you kind of feel like, oh, I'm the only one who's having these problems. I'm the only one having those problems. Um, and it could be anything from pr not getting that proposal out right or not having a, a, an easy way to send proposals out to clients, you know. But when you start having those conversations and, and understanding you're not the only one with those pain points, well, that's when solutions come through. That's why Client Engage has been so useful for you and, 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 mm -hmm. and, and such a benefit for you because they listen to the fact that you know, the proposal side was where your your pain points have been for the last X amount of months, years, whatever it's going to be. But now suddenly you're working with them and, you know, and you've got that relationship with them and and you've got the opportunity to solve a big pain point that you've got. And that, again, that only happened because you were talking at these events and you had the opportunity yeah. to do that. And it, it's a great example, isn't it? Definitely. And these events are so good for networking, like, you know, you and I talk about what we each use and how we each do different processes. I talk to Andy Wainwright at Wainwrights & Co. quite a lot about that kind of thing. But I'm, I've got a growing network of people that are similarly minded and we've all been doing different things different ways. And it's so good to be able to rely, rely on falling back onto them in the form of a WhatsApp or a phone call or a Zoom call. I'm just saying, well, I've got this headache. How are you dealing with that? You know, I spoke to um, a few people recently about practice management softwares and what their pain points are and what mine were. And there's a lot of common ground there. And just because we're talking to them doesn't mean we're giving away our secrets. There's a lot of accountants who won't talk to each other because they're, they're worried about giving away their secrets. But we're all in the same boat here. We're all going to do things slightly differently. We're not going to lose all of our clients overnight just because we spoke to one another about how we do something. Uh, that's not how this works. So, and if you're worried that is how it will work with someone, then just don't speak to that person. But there's people out there you can talk to and build a relationship with and trust and work with closely for your own benefit and theirs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even though, like we said, it's all, we're all in the same boat or those boats can be different, can't they? And, that, and that's the beauty of our industry. Like, you know, we can talk to other accountants because very rarely do we ever overlap in terms of clients or looking at, I mean, me and you doing this podcast, it, you know, from the outside in seems ridiculous, like two accountants talking to the same people and the same everything else. But, you know, at the end of the day, we, we both know that there's, there's more than enough out there and, you, and there's more than enough other opportunities to kind of uh, go out there as well. So I really do think that for me, I think it's like, it, it's an eye opener and it, and it is that, especially when you're when you're first starting your practice or or if you you know if you're a client who's looking to to get an accountant or anything these sort of places are brilliant for them um and, and an opportunity like i'm so jealous of the fact you were at the you know the a business show because the amount of clients that would have been so ben had such benefit from actually having a person like yourself being there you know maybe you know not doing the hard sell to them not saying you must come and join our practice to get some information but going you know what there's probably a better way from what you're doing, even if it's something as simple as that they, you know, they don't know what EPOS solution to use or whatever it's going to be. Actually having someone who's dealt with X amount of clients, who's got X amount of options can go, you know what, we've got these clients and they're, they're loving this EPOS solution, but we've got these clients who don't love this one. But then in your industry, you might actually prefer that solution. And that, that, that sort of information that we hold and we have, and we, because just by talking to our own clients, I think it's invaluable. So, yeah, it, it it is. I think going forward, I think that the, they're learning really the kind of vendors and everything, what what to bring to these events that are going to benefit going forward. I think that's really exciting as well. Definitely, completely agree. That's uh, yeah. There's so much collaboration and networking and opportunities that come off all the back of all these things. Um, but we have some sad news today, um, unfortunately. So. Back in July 2021, the first accounting conference that actually happened after COVID was hit, hit the country was the Digital Accountancy Conference over in Tottenham, uh, which was a really, it was a small event, but a very interesting one because it brought out a lot, it was a lot more affordable. 
so a lot of new startups were there software wise and one of those softwares that I met there, including, so we met, I met Cresco for the first time there, and yep, yep. that's fantastic. I met AirPAR there. I met Timworks there. But one of them was Connect4, a uh, meeting platform, basically. They were trying to make take Zoom and Teams and make it more of a structured meeting. So you would each client would have their own little meeting space, and you'd have agendas, that you could send out before the meeting to make it more efficient. Then you'd have your meeting on video through their platform, make your notes as you go, keep your minutes as you go, end the meeting with a scheduling a new meeting and send out the minutes and stuff and your actions. Unfortunately, last week, Connect4 had, has uh, announced that they are closing down. Um, I think they've really just struggled to get the market penetration they were looking for. There was a lot of early adopters that have embraced it fully. Um, so um, they were using it internally and externally with their clients, and it was they were seeing huge benefits. We've used it myself. We use it internally day to day. We've started using it with clients, but we're now going to have to obviously move away. Um, so, yeah, so they announced last week via a email from the owner, or the CEO to the business to the firm owners that were using it, and then they've put out a blog over the weekend um, explaining it in more detail. Basically, um, so ultimately the platform is closing down. You won't be able to access it from the twenty third of December. So they've given us a month's notice of it, the impending change, um, and they've been quite open and honest in this blog um, about what went wrong and how they've struggled. Um, and basically, it's, uh, what sums up is they struggled with uh, accounting firms not necessarily getting the pain point. Um, so the ones that were on there were loving it, but the, to get more buy-in was a real challenge. They realized that spending money on the video software side of things was a bit of a challenge So with their small team. So they looked to embrace the Zoom and Teams part and just give the functionality of meeting spaces through that. Um, but they were still struggling. And then they realized that they need to speak to more powerfully to softwares like Carbon Accountancy Manager and stuff. But again, they still haven't had a huge uptake. I often think practice management softwares are a bit of a closed house to other integrations. They don't like it. Um, and I think that's potentially where they struggle to get some buy-in. Um, but yeah, it, it's a bit sad to see what was a good idea and a good solution having to close the doors. Um, but it does show the challenges in the software market is our industry is flooded with softwares. And although I've not seen another meeting app like Connect4, they had, a, they had to overcome what is a very competitive and challenging pricing model from Zoom and Teams. And if Teams or Zoom want to launch meeting minutes or agendas, they could probably do it overnight at little cost. Whereas for Connect4 to launch a new feature, it was a huge investment for them. Um, but it also shows the challenges of for early adopters, such as ourselves, Aaron, of we take on these softwares, we embrace them, we put them into our practices and roll them out at, at a risk. And the risk is that they will fail and they will struggle. Um, and in this case, there's a lot of firms out there that had fully integrated Connect4 into both internal and external processes that are now going to have to review that process and change it. And that's a pain point to have with your, com with your client again of, oh, actually, we've stopped using Connect4. They, it didn't, like it closed down. What are you going to say to them? Can you use Teams or can we use Zoom? Um, so yeah, it's it's just a bit disappointing. It's a bit of a headache for us having to change again. Um, but yeah, what are your thoughts, Aaron? Yeah, first of all, it's absolutely gutting. I know you've you've been the one who's t brought me or shown me or talked to me about Connect Four, and yeah, you you kind of show me all the pain points I didn't realize were pain points. And it's, you know, they've always been one of those ones I have 
had on my to do list and never got around to it. And that's that's them. Their major pain pain point was for them was accountants, like you said, buying in. Even for me, who knew there was a pain point, it was still always one of those ones where, you know, I'll get around to that. I'll I'll, I'll do that at some point. And obviously now, too late. There were now. bigger pain points to deal with. Unfortunately, yeah, one. yeah. And, you know, I mean, you know, for me, it's always Microsoft Notes. I can go through my iPad now and it's just pages and pages and pages and pages of Microsoft Notes. And, you know, for me to then find that meeting that I had with a client, I've got to search for it. Maybe I searched the wrong one. Maybe I bring up an old note that I shouldn't have brought up. And, you know, it it, it, is, a, it is a pain point that's worthwhile looking at at some point and worthwhile investigating. And Connect4 really had all those answers and solutions for you. It was a, an, a really nice, nice solution for what i can tell um but it's just so so frustrating that it you know the time's up for them so soon you know hmm. i think a couple more of these sort of events and stuff where they had the chance of people like us talking about them and maybe we'd be able to kind of help them at least you know keep keep going but unfortunately that's not going to be the case and it, you're right it is the case then where we you know we need to do better as an industry we need to find these ones that are absolutely brilliant in what they do and we need to support them and we need to, you know, keep keep doing it. Because like you said, Teams and, and, and Zoom, they don't really need to innovate or change or anything else. They've got a, a rock solid solution that most people have bought into, especially Zoom. It's become the standard, hasn't it? You yeah. you Zoom people these days, these days, even if you're using Teams, you're still Zooming them, aren't you? It's that sort of um, mentality. They don't need to do anything now. They've kind of, they've won, the, won their little, um, or they don't need to innovate if they don't want to. Um but I do feel like we've got to find the next Connect for whoever that is, and we've got to champion them as much as we possibly can because it's a ruthless, ruthless world out there, isn't it? So, Definitely. yeah. Maybe. The challenge of talking to Zoom or Teams is they're a faceless organization. Exactly Whereas if right. you've got yeah. feedback and you're working with a small software provider like Connect for, like Andrew Jordan and Rory, who are the two guys that were really the face of this company and heading it up, as it were. They were very good at taking on feedback and very good at implementing changes based on that feedback. As accountants, we're never going to have that traction with Zoom or Teams. So we either accept what they're offering is there and build it in, or you look for a smaller provider like Connect4. There is a risk that they may not survive and be there forever, but at least what they're building at the time is right for you and your firm because they're listening to you. So, yeah, it's yeah, a challenge. And speaking of feedback, if you do have any feedback for this show, mm. I've just dropped it into the comment section there. So, yeah, that we all live on feedback, even this show itself. So if we've said something that's not quite right or if, you know, you've got something you want to bring in, um, to the conversation, then please do use the feedback or use the questions to get us there. Just like Paul says, there is also the issue of too many softwares making our overheads too large to keep our prices competitive. Um, agree with that, Paul. I think we've just got to be accepting of that. You know, we, we, we're a serviced industry at the end of the day. We, we employ people and people are always going to be our most expensive commodity that we're always going to do as an accounting firm. So our prices have got to incorporate the people cost and the software cost and if we don't have the right software to deliver the right service then we'll be dead in the water because at the end of the day we're, we're going through a big change as accountants aren't we we're going to come from less a, a compliance more business advisory that's something that's been said a long long time and yeah. will continue to be said until the till the cows go home sort of idea um but we do need to keep ourselves competitive and the right software is how you keep competitive in this day and age. And yeah, unfortunately, we've just got to find a way to accept it and, and price accordingly, haven't we? No, and we, as accountants and bookkeepers, we're not always great at weighing up an investment and finding a return on investment if it's not in pounds and pence instantly. So yes, Connect4 had a cost to it. However, the time saved internally in my team by having agendas which meant we kept on point so the meetings were shorter the value to our clients that they, they're all returns on investments but they're not easy to quantify um so i'm convinced we saved a lot of time in our meetings for using connect for connect for because we had an agenda we stuck to it we kept going 
And that time saving meant we had more time to spend on our clients, which meant we could also grow our client base without taking on new staff members. But to try and quantify that is a real challenge and put into pounds and pence. And accountants and bookkeepers traditionally like, if I spend £90 here, what do I get back here? And if it's not obvious, most people won't invest in it. So, you know, we use Dext for our receipt capture. And I know 63% of our documents that go into Dext are auto-published. So that's nearly 3,000 documents a month that my team aren't handling or dealing with in any form. So that results in one, if not two, admin roles that I don't need to recruit for. So the DEX cost is high, but actually compared to having doing it manually, it's an v- absolute bargain. Um, and when I speak to accountants and bookkeepers about DEX, they, or auto entry or hub doc, whatever your solution you're using, they don't always equate the time saving equals a wage saving equals return on investment. They just don't get that. Um, so yes, our overheads are increasing because of new softwares, but there's always a business case for it. And if you if you genuinely can't find one, then you probably don't need it. Um, but yeah, Connect4 certainly saved us a lot of time internally alone of our, on our internal meetings. Meetings that used to take an hour were taking half of that. We, you know, we got through it. We were precise because we had our agendas and stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. We're going to take those learnings and put them into Zoom and Teams or whatever we use. But we needed Connect4 to teach us that in the first place. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, we need, as an industry, we need to be better understanding a return on investment in, in a non-tangible way sometimes um, to understand the value of softwares and overheads bring to us. Yeah, couldn't agree more, couldn't agree more. And it, we've got to be more. And that, that's what these events that we're going to, like Accounting Web Live Expo, yes, you know, those vendors are there to be around for the next uh, next expo more, you know, more, more often than not. So they're going to have to charge for their services. But, you know, you need to not only, as I said before, it's not only to listen to the vendors and, and understand what the vendors are putting forward to you, but talk to the likes of us or other accountants in the industry and find people who can kind of tell you what the value is. Like like Jan just said there about Dext. You know, Dext is a hard sell to a lot of accountants still. And that's to me, that's crazy. I don't understand how that is, you know. What? So you use OCR technology, so no one actually has to physically type the numbers in. For a lot of accounting firms, that's still not, you know, still still crazy and still still a complete and utter fantasy world sort of idea. But it's there and it's being utilized and you know, it's making practice is much more efficient than they've ever been before but if it's not until people have those conversations with people that they go oh okay that's that's what it is and you know OCR technology OCR technology and the ability to scan documents and get them into your accountancy um, solution is now or should be now just common to every single accounting firm in the in the country it shouldn't be an issue but we still got to educate and push it forward and if that's still a pro, you know a pain point that people don't even know is a pain point and don't even know the solution and there's going to be lots and lots and lots of other ones out there so yeah and also selfishly for us as the accountant as well we want to be making sure that we have these uh conversations with them and push them out to you for more content as well so we'll be we'll be doing our best to to get as much of these vendors as we can during the event and uh getting them on on the uh, we have cool friends of reddit as well Definitely, definitely. Awesome. Shall we move on to our questions then? I think we've only got yes, two, haven't we? we should. Um, that we want to bring in. So the first question we had, it was a while ago, actually, but for some reason we just kept uh, kept missing it. It says, Stream Dex, would you like, would love to hear more about your complex macros? So I'm going to be a bit of a, um, what do you call it here? So for anyone who doesn't know, Stream Deck, uh, can I show it on screen? I don't think I can. Uh, just no. about. There it is, yeah. That's people can hopefully see that, but effectively, ah, we are it just shows up, yeah, show off. It's not about the size of your stream dates, how you use it, yeah, and that's how you got to... <laughs> story of my life. <laughs> got to bring it in, um, but yeah, the the whole idea of stream decks is basically it's an opportunity for you to press a button and it will do something, and you can decide what that what that do action is going to be, um, and you can set it up accordingly. I'm going to be really cheeky here and say that actually I've got a whole video. Uh, based on not just stream decks but other accessories 
and that's going to be released on Tuesday. So keep your eye out on that one. Um, and then final question of the day, Jan, and we're going to push it straight to you. Um, have you put up your Christmas decorations yet? Do you run your work Xmas do on a December, January or after 31st of January? And do you re run a secret Santa at your work event? So you know, a nice little Christmas end to the thing. And I did notice before we go on to it, a nice little uh, nice little Christmas decoration you got over there. Is that uh, anything? Yeah. Anything to do with Ask the Accountant at all? <laughs> it is a Ask the Accountant stocking with my name on it. Aaron, you've got one behind you. Yeah. Hoping Santa leaves me something nice in there this year. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be lucky. Can't even leave coal now. It costs too much. <laughs> um, so Christmas decorations in my household are up. Um, my wife's not a huge Christmas person. Uh, but, and to be fair, I wasn't for a long time. Um, but my mum was always very passionate about Christmas. Um, so we, we tend to put our Christmas decorations up a bit earlier uh, in tribute to her who she passed away a couple of years ago um so it's just nice to have a reminder of her and her enthusiasm for the festivities um for a longer period basically um but plus we had a lot of things going on over the next few weeks so it's like when can we get the christmas decorations up if we didn't do it now we probably wouldn't have got it done until the week before christmas um so yeah our christmas decorations are up in regards to a work party, because our team is dotted literally all over the UK, we don't do a work party as such, because trying to organise people all in to one place to do something is just a nightmare, because people have got families, they've got other commitments. Um, so we don't do a Christmas party. Um, we instead give everyone an extra few days off over the Christmas period on us. So it's bonus on top of their holiday allowance. So they don't take holiday time during the Christmas New Year break um, instead of having a Christmas party so people can go and enjoy themselves how they like. Um, and we also don't run Secret Santa because A, we're spread all over the UK, but B, I hate organised fun. Like in my old career, as soon as someone said, right, we're going to run a Secret Santa, you would never see me shoot out of an office that quickly in your life. And as soon as they say it's Christmas, they're doing the Christmas party, it's like, I'll find every excuse not to have to go. Uh, I absolutely dread organised fun. I just don't think there's anything more painful in the world than organised fun. And it's probably why I could never be in a sales team, because it's all about organised fun. Um, you know, team building days and stuff. It's like, no, not for me. And because it's not for me, I just don't generally put it in place in the workplace. Um but I don't think people around me would want it either. So, and that was certainly the feedback I got a few years ago. But I Unless it's throwing axes, it. you enjoyed that though, didn't you? Axe throwing, is that organised fun? Oh, I mean, when else would you throw an axe? <laughs> well, this is true. I, mean, I am in Scotland, so <laughs> different culture up here. But yeah, axe throwing is an informal organised fun, I suppose. When I say organised fun, I mean like, you are going to go to this event and you're going to have fun and it's a bit cringy type things like Secret Santa. Um, so, yeah, it's it's not my cup of tea. What about you, Aaron? Well, Christmas decorations aren't up yet. Um, I'm even in, I wouldn't say argument, but we're in discussions at the moment about when we're putting the tree up. Um, a bit of a heated debate of uh, when that's going to happen um but yeah we will make sure it's all done and dusted it's, it's just time isn't it like we've got so much going on at the moment that when do you find the right time for it and get it all sorted so yeah we'll make sure that gets sorted um so no christmas decorations yet but it isn't lack of trying especially from the other half uh do you run your work christmas due in december january 31st well we had ours christmas do it's a loose way of saying it um but we had ha ours last friday so instead of a Christmas do, we try and do a strategic day. So we try and get out the whole team. Like yourself, we've got team members all over the UK. So we try and find a central or, a, or at least a location. Doesn't always have to be central. There's question marks over Edinburgh being one of the locations one one year. So yeah. Um, and, but the idea would be that we all get together. Uh, we we talk about what's gone right, what's got wrong, that sort of idea in, in the practice and what we can do to help and what we can do to improve it. Um and also then we try and do some organized fun, as you uh, you put it, 
Um, but we went for the escape rooms idea this time around. And two teams, we went off into two different teams and tried to make it a competition. So, you know, we both did the same one and then we swapped and did the different one. Um, and then the idea was which what which team was able to complete both of those in a different scenario. And highly recommend it. That went went down really well. Um, there was some groans when we first mentioned that's what we were doing. But yeah, the whole team kind of really enjoyed it and really, really got on with it. When it comes to Secret Santa, um, thankfully we don't do it anymore because it was we, we were talking about it during the um during the strategic day of kind of past Christmas endeavors and everything else. And and yeah, there was more HR issues that came out of Secret Santa <laughs> than it was worthwhile. Um yeah, so there's there's the there's obviously we all want to have a have fun and enjoy it, but sometimes people may take it a little bit too far. So yeah, we do try and uh, yeah, we don't do it anymore purely just because of the fact that um, we have the geographical issue. Um, but yeah, we uh, we when we did do it, was was a lot of fun, I'd say. But yeah, there was uh, some HR issues that I'm glad I don't have to deal with anymore. So yeah, call me a Scrooge, but yeah, um, <laughs> I think I prefer to uh, to be called a Scrooge and have HR issues. So well, that is the way it is. Okay. Um, and I think that's everything, isn't it? Yeah, and I've, we've put the question or the the comment section we've put have a question use the link but if you do have any other questions for us then please use whatever form you're using to listen to us be a podcast service of your choice or youtube linkedin whatever it's going to be if you look down below there's a little link for questions for future videos so yeah and um, don't forget to review us on um apple ipod stations and wherever you're listening to us from if there's an option to leave a review we'd love to for you to leave a review so more people then get to see this content rightly or wrongly um but yeah it's uh we we're really enjoying doing these shows so hopefully you're enjoying listening and uh yeah leave us a review to reflect that and that'd be fantastic yeah. and if you need an icebreaker for the expo have you heard about ask the accountant you know yeah bring it on there the more people who talk about it the more referrals you get more chance you'll be on the show as well. So that's your plug in this year. Definitely. Um, so the week ahead, Aaron, what have you got going on? It's all about counting web live expo for me. We've got lots of work to get done beforehand so that I can actually enjoy it um, and get the time to do it. So yeah, it's uh, just full plow ahead so we can get the work done because obviously we've got the month end very, very close now. So make sure we got everything done for the month end, and then we'll uh, we'll be concentrating on the live expo itself. What about yourself, Jan? Yeah, no, I'm <clears throat> I'm in the office today, and then um, my right hand person Jade, she's back to work on tomorrow morning after a week off. So I've basically been covering her role for the last week. So she's back tomorrow. Um, so that means I can be on a train. I'll debrief her while I'm on the train on the phone. And then that's me focused on accounting web live for a couple of days, travel back Friday morning, hopefully get back in time for about four o'clock on Friday, just to catch up with the team before they finish for the weekend. Nice. And that'll be it. That'll be another week gone. I'm not, not really sure where that is, but um, yeah. And then we'll be back next Monday to discuss all things accounting web live. Um, see who had the best swag We'll uh, definitely review some swag for you all um, and find out what we find out in the after parties where the lips become a little bit looser and you find out about the roadmaps and stuff that perhaps we won't get told if we go to them on the stand in the morning. Um, yeah. So, and if yeah. we get the opportunity, we want to try and get some content out of there as well. We'll leave it at that. Yep. But yeah, if, if we can make it work, we want to make sure that you guys don't miss out on that as well. So yes, yes. keep your ears peeled. And is there an update on Ask the Accountant, We Have Cool Friends, episode one? We're hoping it goes for, um, uh, what do you call it, it goes for review this week and hopefully released on Friday. If it's not this Friday, it'll be the Friday after. So a little right. December treat for you all will be uh, our first cool friend. As, as we've already we've already said, it. can't wait for everyone to listen to more about QuickBooks and how QuickBooks is working with our QuickBooks expert that Johan brought to the table. So we're looking forward to that one. <laughs> yeah no it was a really good interview and um yeah i think hopefully our audience will enjoy that um and okay. if anyone else wants to be one of our cool friends and have have a hour-long interview about their career what they do now 
what whether they work for a software company or whatever it is, if they think they've got an interesting story, please do drop it into the feedback on the feedback forms and we will organize a chat. Um, we want to try and make the We've Got Cool Friends episodes, the bonus episodes that they are, um, a bit more professional than just Aaron and I streaming from our offices. So it will be done ideally in a podcast uh, studio solution. Um, but we'll organize that if you just turn up. So yeah, if that's something you want to be involved in, do drop it into the feedback and question link and we'll take it from there. Um, but that's everything from me, Aaron. I will see you on Wednesday at some point, I'm sure. Um, from what I've seen of the QuickBooks stand, you're not going to miss it. It's huge. Um, so <laughs> pop on by and say hello to myself. And Aaron might be hanging around at certain points, um, but he'll be walking around in all his logoed gear. So whether it's a Boffix g or a Ask the Accountant T-shirt, he will have the gear for you to be able to find him. Um, and any face-to-face -face feedback you want to offer, that's really appreciated. So, yeah. So, from me, that's goodbye. Yep, and from me, goodbye. Remember, don't, as Jan said, don't be a stranger. If you do see us, just say hi, and uh, we look forward to seeing you during the week. Brilliant. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye.